This video is a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the installation process for the Heatstroke LHG on Ford 6.7 liter Power Stroke diesel trucks. Its purpose is to familiarize you with the installation process before you begin. Not every detail is covered in this video and you should carefully follow the installation guide during an actual installation. To prepare the truck, begin by removing the air intake tube and the air filter cover. It is also a good idea to remove the air filter and set it aside so it does not get contaminated. Place a rag in the intake to prevent items from accidentally falling in. Disconnect the driver's side battery and the passenger side battery. Then remove the passenger side battery and set it aside. Using a 3 8 inch drive ratchet and breaker bar on the tensioner, release the serpentine belt tension and slip the belt off the pulleys. You will not be able to remove the belt yet. Locate the wires that power the radiator fan, disconnect the wires from the fan, and then remove the serpentine belt. Remove the driver's side serpentine belt pulley. Remove the center serpentine belt pulley. Remove the four bolts indicated here. The next step is to complete the LHG bracket assembly. Make sure to consult the manual for specifics about parts, the use of thread lock, and torque settings. Attach the cable tie mount to the LHG weldment. Attach the LHG to the weldment. Be careful not to pinch the clutch wire this wire should move freely in the notch shown here. From the back, insert the longer bolt through the hole with a bushing and finger tighten. Then insert and finger tighten the shorter bolt. See the manual for specifics. Flip the LHG assembly over and double check to make sure that the clutch wire is not being pinched. before tightening the bolts and torquing them according to the installation manual specifications. Attach the RPM bracket assembly to the weldment and torque the bolts to the installation manual specifications. Check the RPM sensor gap according to the installation manual specifications and adjust it if necessary. Secure the RPM sensor wiring using a nylon tie and the tie mount you installed earlier. The preparation of the LHG bracket assembly is now complete.
Prepare the two new idler pulleys as shown here and described in the installation manual. Install the new center idler pulley. Install the new driver side idler pulley. Note that the location for the driver side idler pulley is now different from the original OEM position. Test fit the mounting studs shown here to make sure they insert and turn freely. If they do, skip the next step and install the studs. If the studs do not thread and turn freely, locate and loosen, do not remove, the two bolts shown here. Only loosen the bolts until the fan belt bracket is able to move slightly as shown here. This should allow the studs to thread and turn properly. To protect the thread on the studs, install the two nuts from the kit onto each stud in turn and use them to thread each stud to a depth of 1 inch or 25.4 millimeters. If you loosen the two bolts on the fan hub bracket, make sure you retighten and torque them properly now. This must be done at this point as completing this step will be difficult if not impossible once the LHG is installed. To make room for the LHG, locate the OEM wiring connector attached to the bottom of the air intake. Unattach the connector from the original location and tuck it up into the tray under the intake as shown here. The LHG assembly is heavy and contains parts that are sensitive to impact. Take special care when lifting and installing the assembly. The two studs you installed earlier will be used to hold and stabilize the LHG assembly as you install it on the engine. Carefully lift the LHG assembly. Align the bottom two holes on the LHG bracket with the two studs and slide the assembly onto the studs. Install the two flange nuts onto the studs and finger tighten. Install the two remaining LHG assembly mounting bolts. Torque all the LHG assembly mounting bolts and nuts according to the manual. The LHG assembly is now installed. Using the manual for specific guidance, route and tension the serpentine belt. Measure and trim both supplied coolant hoses at the angled ends as shown here. Locate the supply coolant hose connector where it passes through the firewall. Remove and save the locking ring, disconnect the hose, and move it aside. To determine the proper length for the LHG output hose, attach but do not secure one of the hoses to the LHG output. Route this hose around the engine and through the wiring to the connector on the firewall. making sure you angle the hose away from the engine at the LHG to leave enough length so the hose will not come in contact with any hot surfaces. 
Mark the desired length and trim the hose at the firewall end. Using one of the supplied hose clamps, attach the quick connect adapter to the firewall or non-LHG end of the hose. With the adapter attached, route the hose to the firewall connection and snap it into place. Secure the angled end of the hose to the LHG. The completed output hose installation should look like this. Connect, but do not secure the angled end of the supplied input hose to the remaining LHG input connector. Mount the hose around the engine to the quick connect running outside and slightly above the output hose. Make sure to allow for space between the hot engine parts and the hose. Cut the hose to length and using one of the supplied hose clamps, attach the hose adapter. Connect the adapter to the OEM quick connect and secure it with the locking ring saved from when the hose was removed from the firewall. Complete the hose installation by using the supplied nylon tie wraps to secure the hoses to each other, to other secure components, and away from any hot engine parts. Holding the top of the ECU bracket no more than one half inch below the overhang Mark where to drill the pilot holes for the bracket mounting screws. Take care as mounting the bracket too low will interfere with the battery. Using one of the self-drilling screws or a drill bit, pre-drill the holes for mounting the ECU bracket to the firewall. Using the self-drilling screws provided in the kit, attach the ECU to the ECU bracket. Then attach the bracket to the firewall. Plug the wiring harness into the ECU and route the harness to the LHG. Attach the connectors for the LHG clutch, black on the harness, black from the LHG. Attach the connectors for the temperature sensor, gray on the harness, black with brass directly mounted to the LHG. Connect the RPM sensor wiring. These connectors are the same size and fit and are marked with red and yellow. Make sure to connect red to red and yellow to yellow. On the wiring harness, locate the outside ambient temperature sensor, OATS and route it through the engine compartment to the underside of the truck. Consult the installation manual for specifics about routing and securing the OATS. Locate the OEM wires that pass through the firewall. Remove the insulation from the ends and separate out the white and white with orange wires. Strip about one quarter inch of the insulation off both the white and white with orange wires. Following the installation manual instructions, connect them to the pink and gray wires on the harness using the crimp connectors already attached. Use a heat gun or other method to shrink the insulation and seal the connections.
Then secure and insulate the remaining OEM pass-through wires. Detach the top of the lower driver's side dash cover and protect the area where the switch will be mounted with some painter's tape. Print and cut out the positioning template found in the manual and attach it appropriately to the target location. Using the target on the template, drill the hole for the heatstroke LHG dash switch. Following the manual, prepare the switch and the switch decal. Thread the switch wiring through the hole you just drilled and under the dash to the passenger side fuse box. Near the fuse box inside the cabin on the passenger side, you will find the white wire and the white with orange wire that come through the firewall. Following the specifics in the manual, attach the gray and pink wires from the switch to the wires that come through the firewall using the crimp connectors already attached. Attach the blue wire from the switch to the supplied fuse tap and plug the fuse tap into spot 35 in the fuse box. Reinstall the passenger side battery and connect the black and red leads from the LHG wiring harness. Using the supplied nylon ties, secure the wiring in the cabin and under the hood. Reconnect the radiator fan wires and top off the coolant if the reservoir is low. Remove the rag from the intake and replace the air filter, filter cover, and intake hose and make sure the OATS is properly secured under the truck. Anytime you start the engine and switch on the LHG, the ECU will run its normal check sequence, cycling through all red and green LEDs. The very first time the LHG is started, after it is installed, the ECU will perform a special first start sequence it will begin by performing an air purge. The air purge allows the coolant system to clear any air from the LHG and the new hoses. This will take around three minutes, during which time the ECU will cycle the green LEDs in sequence. Next, the ECU will perform a three minute burnishing sequence to remove any corrosion or contamination from the clutch. Some or all of the green LEDs will remain solid and the yellow LED will blink. You will also hear a clicking sound from the clutch on the LHG. When the first start sequence is finished, the LHG installation is complete.